What is going on guys? We are back playing some more Surviving with Industrial Craft 2. Now today guys, we're going to be messing around with the radioisotope thermoelectric generator. So we're going to be taking a little bit of a step away from nuclear reactors and all that stuff, but we're staying with radioactive material, so that's always fun. But we used the radioisotope heat generator a couple episodes ago, and we put it into the biomass biogas setup going on down here, and I noticed something that is pretty intriguing. So unfortunately I can't click on this thing, but if we go and look at the uh, radio, it should be enough to just type in radio. So if we look at these, they say the power output is one to 32 for heat units or EU per tick. Well, that doesn't seem that bad if you think about it, but actually it starts at two and goes to 64 EU per tick. So it's a little deceptive when you're looking at the tooltips in NEI, uh, because you can't get a lot of power generation from it. So I decided that instead of making something that could potentially blow up my base, uh, I'm gonna make something that you know might use radioactive material and get us good power, uh, but it won't have the threat of blowing up and I don't have to maintain it at all. So the reason that this is great for me is because uh, I at least have three nuclear reactors, three different kinds of nuclear reactors, all running at the same time getting power or steam to get power. So I do have a lot of uh, uranium fuel rods specifically that I can turn into plutonium and then we can make RTG pellets from it. So my goal today is to make, I have this stuff to make four of these radioisotope thermoelectric generators, which will eventually be running at 64 EU per tick each. And essentially the goal is to just uh, fill them up as much as I can progressively. Uh, this is a full batch of the depleted uranium cells from the plutonium generating nuclear reactor that I have downstairs right now. Um, I do have a little bit of plutonium just here and there from extra fuel rods. If you guys remember, I had some partially depleted ones from the old system when I put it in there. So I was able to get through those, but we still have 27 left. So before I do any crafting today, I'm going to bring these over here to the thermal centrifuge and start processing them. So uh, I did want to show you guys what one batch will get us, and I still have a ton of uranium and stuff in here and iron dust, so we're not even going to have enough room in here to process this, but uh, it'll just start filling up. I think it'll fill up the internal storage in here. Yeah, it will. So uh, we're going to start crafting. We're going to make these, and then we're going to move up the uh, whole UU matter setup going on downstairs, which is the scanner pattern storage, replicator, and mass fabricator, and we're going to hook it up specifically just to the uh, four radioisotope thermoelectric generators, and I'm going to see how far I can push it. We're starting with four right now, but eventually we're going to move it to probably like as many as we can honestly get, um, which should exponentially scale as we get more power, but I'm rambling at this point. I got to jump into things, so grab all this stuff and start crafting. Uh, this is actually relatively inexpensive to make. It takes a ton of iron. Really the most expensive part of this whole setup is just making the uh, RTG pellets because they each take dense iron plate that's not regular iron plate, uh, which is nine regular iron plates. So that took a lot of stuff. Luckily, every time I process some of these uh, depleted uranium, we do get one thing of iron dust, so it does return a little bit, but eventually I have to use that to make more of the fuel rods. So it really it doesn't give you anything. Um, it just kind of recycles it a little bit. But now what we need to do is make the reactor chambers, which luckily don't take dense lead plate. They just take regular ones. And lastly, we just got to surround it by the item or the iron item casing. So there we go. We got this right here. Same as the other one. I'll just throw it down to show you guys. It looks pretty cool. Uh, but you can see that we've got the slots in here to fill in six RTG pellets. Now, if you haven't seen the previous video, I do want to explain how this works. So essentially you throw in an RTG pellet and that pellet is going to last forever. It's unlike, um, you know, other radioactive materials. It does not decay. It doesn't have half life or anything. Uh, it is just going to sit in there forever and generate power. Or if you're using the heat one, generate heat based on being in there. So it's essentially a better version of a solar panel and it goes up exponentially as you throw more and more pellets in there between two and 64. Here it would have been one, then I believe it'd be one, two, huh, I don't even know how it would scale for this one up to six. It would be like one, two, four, six, or eight, 16, 32, I think would be what it was, yeah. So mul like multiply by two each time, but this one it goes the two, four, eight, 16, 32, 64. So uh, pretty much just exponentially increasing by, you know, one, it's two raised to however many of these you have in here, uh, if you're curious, but 
these should start processing soon so i'm kind of hesitant to craft these tiny piles of plutonium into plutonium until we have all those done so what we can do now is start moving this stuff over here not enough energy for lossless operation oh my gosh i really do need a backpack for these or a bat pack whatever you want to call it because i am going to use so much energy moving all this so yeah look at that it's not really that much energy in the grand scheme of things but the internal storage on this thing is horrific so uh, we can throw it in there, and then we got to grab all these things off the wall over here. So I don't know if these lose what they have in them. So obviously the scanner's got nothing in it right now. We can pop that off. Uh, but right here, the replicator, I do. Yeah, there's actually nothing in there. It takes the pattern from the pattern storage, so we get that off. And I'm pretty sure here, if I wanted to... Do we want to go make a crystal? Do I have what we need to make a crystal right now? Uh... I do not. I don't have obsidian dust right now. Okay, so if this loses what it's scanned, it's a little unfortunate, but we can rescan stuff. I suspect it does, and that's why you'd export it to a crystal before you move it. But we're going to grab this, and come on, let me get back there. I finally am using the drill. Uh, I've used it before when we're making the reinforced stone, but that's really it. So now I'm finally using it because this is pretty much dead. I might as well just throw this out. But, huh, we're going to have to cover up that wall. And now we can break this. And yes, yeah, so we just have the recycler here. Grab this out. And where's my wrench? My wrench is right here. So I'm going to try and do a better job of maintaining using the recycler as it pretty much makes it one, roughly one tenth of the energy cost to make one millibucket. Uh, but we can grab this out. And oh, you know what? We're going to need to refill this. Okay, there we go and grab this okay so we can also just get rid of all these and now there's not really going to be anywhere for this power to go at the moment but i can just hook it up over here and then i really don't care about the energy coming from this this is a whole new batch of uranium that's sitting in here so uh you know this will be processing while we're setting all this up and you know that should lead to another th that, that would be each one of those i'm actually not sure how much that would lead to i don't know the exact number of plutonium that you get from each or tiny pile of plutonium i should say from each of the fuel rods but we can make a little bit more because we're going to be making the room right over here obviously that's why there's a hole in the wall uh, i just decided eventually that we're going to be building out here no one's going to see it but us so after i made the reinforced stone out here i thought you know what screw it let's just let's put rooms off the back over here so i don't have to worry about us uh, expanding and eventually maybe i'll just terraform out there and cover the whole thing up with stone who knows but is this oh man that's not gonna be close to being done for a while so maybe we won't use these tiny piles of plutonium on camera but whatever um luckily when i processed the ones that are sitting in there the tiny piles of plutonium i was able to process the uh extra dual fuel rods that i had because i can i cycled through on the liquid nuclear reactor which actually uses the dual fuel rods so got me a little bit more but what i'm thinking we do is just put these on the wall and then we can wire them so throw them like this and if you're wondering what you should do to set these up you should fill one up at a time because since it goes up by multiples of two if you were to use four and one then you would be getting what 16 but if you were to get uh, four spaced out, you'd be doing two, 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 and two. So you'd only get eight because it's not multiplicative. So multiplicative is better than additive in all the cases here. So I am going to fill in right here, but eventually I'll put like another one up there and maybe even put them right here. I do want to keep a doorway, but got to expand this out a little bit more so that we can start throwing down the replicator stuff, which should probably, we'll go one, one more back just to leave some room. Uh, it'll take forever for me to fill these up actually so i'm not super worried about expanding but we'll build right here and i should actually probably get cooking down some more stone got a lot of cobble in here that's really all i use the chest for now is just storing cobble but okay so we come over here uh, and i want to throw these down i'm trying to think of the best way to throw them down because we want them to be able to send things to one another so i'm thinking we want the scanner the scanner needs to be next to the pattern storage, and the pattern storage needs to be next to the uh, replicator, is what it is. So these need to be next to each other, and the replicator needs to be able to get things. So I think we can just do them across the bottom here, I think, right? So scanner, pattern storage, replicator, like that. And then we're going to have the mass fabricator 
right above it, right over here. And we can have the recycler. Oh man, this looks so weird. This looks so weird. Uh, we can have the recycler like right up here, right? Yeah, we can just put that up there. And then I can just throw the hopper down right like that. That looks really bad, but whatever. Uh, fill it in. So I guess we actually didn't need more stone. We actually shouldn't fill it in completely yet because we do need to wire power from these. So each one, assuming it's at its maximum output, should be fine with gold cable for now. So uh, I actually have that on me. Cool. How is this going? Okay, so it's at 15. It's getting a little bit extra. That should get us being able to, that that'll be three. So that'll be one pellet. That'll be one extra pellet that we can use. So break that. And I'll just put this here so it's a little bit easier to walk, but we're gonna wire it from the back like so. And I wanna wire it like this because I wanna keep it on the same level down here as all of these machines because we do need to wire both of these in there and then we can wire this in and then we can circle around and do the same thing over here. I'm going to put, is that the same? Like that? Yeah, it is. So that's in the same, oh no, darn it. Huh. Do I pillar up? I don't think I do. I think I gotta run around, guys. You're gonna see why I should not be using, I don't know, it's it's a conflicting opinion of mine because I don't wanna get radiation, but I also want the ability to fly. I just don't feel like keeping my, um, oh gosh, my quantum armor in my inventory all the time. So it's really, you know, it's just, it's rough trying to decide. Okay, so now we just gotta wire these around and then this will actually be okay to run. So I should just break this wall and we can wire them through here. This will be a little bit easier. Wire it like this. Fill this in right here. There we go. And come back out here and just connect the wires. There we go. And that's there as a stepping stone if I need it, I guess. Probably won't need it, but why did I even put that there? I feel like I'm just wasting stone brick. But let's just, we'll, we'll cover this up. We'll make it look a little bit better out here. And then we can cover up the top because why not? Oh my gosh, I'm, I'm throwing bricks everywhere. Throwing them everywhere, okay. So there we go, that should be good. Did this lose? Oh, it didn't lose the patterns, nice, that's awesome, okay. So this did lose, obviously, what's in it. We did lose like 80 millibuckets, which is a little bit unfortunate, but it happens, and this is at zero because there's nothing running here and there's nothing in the hopper. So what we can do is start things out by getting a bunch of cactus here and I should really make a better system for getting this cactus over there because as you can see we have way too much cactus even with uh, the upgraded system downstairs running faster than before uh, but I can use this with the recycler it's phenomenal and I just need to get a better way to wire them over here essentially other than just hoppers but most of the time I manually transport it so for the most part these should be okay I thought that looked a little bit weird we can leave that there, that's only one pellet, so we can come over here, grab the plutonium, start crafting this, and oh, it looks like we're one short off another piece of plutonium, but we're at nine right now, so that is great. That means that we're gonna be able to craft three pellets. That is not what we want. I crafted 64 of these dense iron plates just because I wasn't sure how many I was going to be able to make. Unfortunately, we're not gonna be able to make that many. So luckily for me, that means that while I'm working on this, I don't have to worry about these dense iron plates and crafting more of them. I can just, you know, use those as we go. It took me forever to get that iron, but we can throw these in here and it should start generating power. You can see that this thing kicks on. Now, it doesn't tell you how much it's actually generating, but I believe the heat one does. So let's go, I want, I'm curious, I wanna see this. I think the heat one tells you how much it's generating at the time. So we do have to come down here. Yeah, so this one tells you, the other one doesn't, that's weird. But assuming they work the same way, uh, and I'd be interested to see, this one should be getting right now uh, eight EU per tick, which is, that should be eight, right? Yeah, two, four, eight. So nothing fancy, this is gonna go really, really slow. And not to mention the recycler is going to be run on the same power for all of this. And pretty much everything is going to be filling up right now. So if this is filling up, everything's filling up. It's not going to get almost any energy. But once I get all of these full, getting 64, I think it'll be a worthwhile project. I think it'll be pretty cool because I have so many things around my base right now that can explode, kill me, destroy everything, ruin my life that it's nice to have something that I can just leave and not have to monitor, not have to worry about it blowing up, not have to worry about any of that. It is very, you know, different than what I normally have. 
Uh, and I just think it'll be a fun project. So maybe every couple episodes I'll jump back here, see how things are doing. Um, pretty much just, you know, every two hours and 45 minutes I spend in the game, I can probably make the one reactor that we have going downstairs that's specifically for plutonium is going to be able to get me uh, one pellet per three hours in game. Then we have the MOX reactor, which we're going to pretty much use to refill itself, so that'll get us nothing. And then the liquid cooled one is going to be used to, at one point, help maintain the MOX reactor. And then after that, all the extra will come up here. So it's probably like roughly two pellets every three hours I'm in game. So not actually that bad. Only every couple episodes will we go over this. But I hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. If you found it entertaining or informative or useful in any way, feel free to give it a like. And I will talk to you guys later.